F1 is coming. Yes, yes. No, no, not that F1. We're talking about the F1 Grand Prix. So for those of you who are new to this channel, I am Peter, a wireless audiophile based out of Singapore, where I grew up and where I belong. Now, before I go on to the rest of the video, I'd like to give you an upfront summary first. I tend to make pretty long in-depth videos and I know they can drag on a little bit too long, taking up too much of your time. So these Vice from Klipsch, they use carbon fiber woofers to deliver very strong and powerful bass. And with a plethora of inputs, including the HDMI ARC port, you might want to consider this over a soundbar if you want great sound coming from your TV. Now, the software leaves quite a bit to be desired, but thankfully, you don't have to interact much with the software. The looks of these speakers might just cover the pain of using that software. Now, these are easily the prettiest pair of speakers I've ever come across. Look at that. Now, so that's it for the upfront summary. I respect your time that way. And if you don't have time to stay for the rest of the video, you can take this as a buy recommendation and skip the rest of the video. But if you have time to stay, I'd like to go a little bit more in-depth and I would like to get into the storytelling mode. So the F1 Grand Prix was first held in Singapore in the year of 2008, which marked a couple of firsts for the sport. It was the first country in Asia to host an F1 event, and it was also the first time that a night race was ever held in the history of F1. Now, night races have become increasingly more common in F1. In 2023, there will be up to six night races with the addition of the Las Vegas Grand Prix and the Qatar Grand Prix uh, added to the calendar. So it shows the significance significant impact that Singapore Grand Prix has had on racing under night lights in F1. Now, for a couple of days before and maybe a few weeks after the F1 event in Singapore, you'll notice that the DNA of most Singaporean drivers would have been rewired and for some reason, they go faster on the roads, including those who shouldn't be going any faster than they're supposed to. Wait a minute, so this is a wireless audio file channel. Why are we talking about F1? Now you see, there's a parallel between the acceleration of racing that has got to do with speed and a speaker. And on top of that, the exotic materials used in F1 racing and the livery on the car with the associated price tag. And it all comes together in this small little package here, the Fives from Klipsch McLaren Edition. Now, let me start by talking a little bit about the original speaker that this is based upon, the Klipsch, the Fives. The Fives was a pair of powered bookshelf speakers from Klipsch. Not very big, it's about 30.5 centimeters tall, and it has a tweeter and a bass driver. But what really sets this apart was the connectivity that it offered. Now, if you look at the back panel, you'll see that it has an analog input, a photo stage input, a digital optical input, USB input, and more important of all, the HDMI arc input, which allows you to use the speaker with a TV. Now, on top of all the physical ports, you also have Bluetooth connectivity. Note that this doesn't have Wi-Fi and you won't be able to connect directly to a streaming service without your phone or an external streamer. Now, the right speaker, which is the primary speaker, is the power speaker. And the left speaker, which I set it as such, the secondary speaker needs to be connected via a four-pin DIN cable. Now, they are not individually powered, so the speaker with all the ports is the one with the processing and the amplification. Now, you can set either side to the left or the right, depending on your placement. It's just one switch, right? And it also depends on where your power point is. Now, if you look at the DIN cable connects, right? They, there are four pins in the DIN. That means that both the tweeter and the bass drivers are individually amped and by wired. Sometimes audiophiles, they get high when they hear by amping and by wiring. Now, I lasted over the original device for quite a while now. I've always wanted to get them, but I had no space to use them. So I shelved that idea and packed it away until they came up with this McLaren edition. So if you liken a utility sedan with the original Klipsch, the Fives, then the McLaren edition is the one that puts the F1 in that utility sedan. It makes everything feel faster, even if it's not actually so, but it is actually faster. Now, the first thing that struck out to me was the finishing on the cabinet. So it is a 
smooth matte finish and the edges here they are rounded as opposed to the original fives which are kind of uh, more edgy and uh, sharper and the cables the speaker cables and the power cables they are all supplied in orange livery which is synonymous with the f1 mclaren racing team now the bottom of the speaker it has a skid pad all right and it features the intermediate tire pattern. The tweeter itself has the orange treatment here and more importantly, the big change here is the base driver, right? This is a carbon fiber, woven carbon fiber driver. Now that will obviously change the sound as carbon fiber has less overall mass for the same rigidity required for a tighter, more controlled base, which is basically the star feature of this pair of powered speakers here. Now speaking of controls, there are two dials at the top and a column of LED lights. Now one of the dials, the top dial, will control the source, switching between all the various inputs and the other will control the volume, right? And when you're controlling the volume, the LED light lights up accordingly to indicate what level of the volume is. Now, note that it's at the top, so if you're in a sitting position, listening to a speaker, you can't actually see the volume control or rather indicator. Now, there is a supply remote, uh, never mind. There is a supply remote that will control the speaker as well. And there are a few more controls that you can adjust that you can't do with the dials on the speaker alone. So for one, if you have a sub connected, yes, you can control the sub. And you can control the sub output volume. And it also allows you to then set up the 2.1 setup, right? Two stereo pairs as well as one sub output. Now, I won't be talking about that in today's video. So if you're interested, let me know down in the comment section below and I might cover that sometime in the future if I um, have the time to cover that. Now, beyond the dials on the speaker and the remote, there is yet another way to control the fives and that is using the Klipsch Connect app. Now, I won't beat around the bush here, right? This is where the speaker's immaculate implementation and sound trips out. The app is downright awful. It is slow, it is unresponsive. Every time you go into the app and connects, it starts to load something and retrieve whatever data it's trying to retrieve. But it, it is just slow. I hate the app. This is the one aspect of the speaker that I'm not enjoying. But the problem is the app truly opens up extra possibilities. There is a three band EQ equalizer, which can be accessed only via the app. You can also enable night mode and you're able to access speaker placement options, which will tailor the bass output depending on how you place the speakers. But this is where things get a little bit worse, right? Because in order to unlock all those extra settings using the Klipsch Connect app, you have to upgrade the firmware on these speakers. And the process truly requires some patience and tech savviness. Now, I would say like, for example, my mom won't be able to do this. Now, in fact, it is a two-step process that requires you to use a PC to download the firmware onto a USB drive, which we will then need to connect to the rear of the speaker. There's a USB service port there, and then you can update the firmware. And you will have to use another Clips updater app on your mobile to update the speaker again wirelessly. Now, that process took uh, pretty long and it wasn't the most straightforward. If you need help, I'm linking the support pages down in the video description below. Now, Clips really need to rethink the process of software updating. It almost feels like a process where a support engineer is required and you have to bring the speaker in for them to do this. But that's it. It only has to be done once, thankfully, and you don't have to touch that updater again. So after the process is done, all the additional features in the app will then open up. I would say you will need to do that. Otherwise, the speaker is not actually performing to its full potential uh, with all the features unlocked. When that is done, the speaker is God damn glorious. Now, there aren't many speakers out there with a HDMI input port, which means that you can connect this to a TV using the HDMI ARC or EARC port. So while most people go for a soundbar to improve the TV sound, this turns out to be a very good musical alternative to a soundbar. Now, a soundbar is unable to achieve the stereo separation that can be attained by two of these left and right speakers. The largest, longest soundbar out there, probably just about four feet long or wide, if you may. Now, these speakers 
can reach out as far as the speaker cable allows. And the supplied speaker cable, the one in orange here, is 4 meters long, which is right about 13 feet. Now, this will easily flag the largest TV or projector screen that you have, and it will create the widest soundstage and stereo separation that you will ever need. Now, I've tested these 7 feet apart, flanking a 75-inch TV, and they work very, very well. Now, on top of the stereo separation that can be achieved, I got a solid lock on the vocals when I'm listening to music. Now, I prefer music that focuses on the vocals of a singer. And while using these speakers, such tracks, they rarely disappoint. The imaging of the bookshelf speakers with proper placement was really accurate. And it places the singer right in the middle between the two speakers. I did not even have to angle the speakers in at all. Now, beyond that, the bass from the fives was really in excess of what I needed. Bass was really quite tight and didn't suffer from a lack of control and flabbiness. Right? Now, at this point, I'd like to pull up the frequency response charts for the fives. Right? So I first hooked up uh, these to my MacBook and output the signal to the fives using the USB input port. The speakers were recognized straight away. Then I pull out a calibrated mic that I've been using to measure speakers that I test on this channel. I ran a sequence of frequencies all the way from 20 hertz all the way to 20 kilohertz and then used the mic to measure the response from the speaker. Now, if you look at this chart, right, you'll notice that the response in the bass department is indeed very, very much emphasized. In fact, it could even be to the point that you want to move them away from the walls and the corners a little to reduce the amount of bass that the room interaction will lend to this pair of speakers. Now, this chart was with the speaker set to a wall position, which the Klipsch Connect software will actually instruct the speaker to reduce the bass by 3 dB. Now, if you set it to corner, it will reduce the uh, bass by 6 dB. If you set it to others and you know what you are exactly doing, then there will be no bass reduction and you will hear the full force of the bass that Eclipse 5 is capable of achieving. I believe that the carbon fiber material lends itself quite well to the bass output of the 5s. Now, carbon is a much more rigid and a stronger material, pound for pound, than a lot of other traditional speaker cone materials. Some might find that the sound from the carbon fiber will cone will make a speaker sound a little bit brittle and overly sharp, robbing it of any warmth or mellowness in the sound. But if you're going all out for bass, the use of carbon fiber here will allow for the bass to stay very well controlled, very tight, without any hint of flabbiness. Now, I got a little bit ambitious while I was testing these speakers out and I paired a small subwoofer to the clips. It was a SVS SP3000 Micro. Now, it's a very small footprint sub. Now, initially, I thought it lended enough bass to the fives to augment the bass output, but I wanted more. So, I used the remote control of the clips to increase the sub output levels. And I realized at that point, actually, the sub output was initially set to zero. And I was almost convinced that the sub was already playing. That's how impressive that the bass from the fives are. Now, if you're trying to fill a small room or a small study or bedroom, you don't need a subwoofer to go with these fives to get satisfying levels of bass. Now, these speakers are so good that I'm thinking if I should be replacing one of my setup in the house to use them. In fact, I've moved them into my tiny studio here. And as you can see, they are probably a little bit too big for this tiny room. But I think they are good enough to keep around the house for some lively music and movies, maybe with a subwoofer again. Now, if you are getting these, do consider speaker stands to go with these. I'm using the Kanto SPL26, which I have reviewed before. If you missed that video, do check it out right here. You might be surprised at the amount of improvement that a pair of speaker stands will actually lend to your speakers. And I will see you over in that video.